Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Swapnil Bharatiya, and my next guest is, once again, Ben Singleman, CEO of Lightstep. Ben, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit different, right? Because the company has been acquired by ServiceNow. So, so you know, uh, you you are in a totally different phase right now. So I want to talk about that also. But before we go there, let's talk about uh, uh, how has... Uh, uh, being this uh, acquisition, uh, how, why you decided to move forward, what value you see that you are bringing as a combined with service now to the whole ecosystem? Because if I look at your career graph, you have been focusing more on serving the ecosystem and, and, and customers and creating things to help them. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I, I think it's in some ways a continuation of that overall personal mission that drives me. I, I think I, uh, I mean, there's a longer story here if you want it, but I'm really driven by having an impact. Like that's the main thing that makes me feel like I'm using my time well as a human being. And uh, with observability, the impact that we have today and to date really has been on engineering organizations. But my belief anyway is that observability, um, it, it should be relevant to any aspect of a business that de- that in some way depends on these like really enormous cloud native applications that people are building to you know reinvent revenue generation to every enterprise over the world and uh if we're going to make observability useful beyond the engineering organization it's much easier to have that impact at a company that already has um huge you know value drivers for these other parts of the organization to be concrete about that if there's a customer facing uh, role at some kind of large enterprise that's building some cloud native application, like, you know, just uh, totally off the top of my head. It's like Chase Mobile is like an app that everyone at, you know, Chase Bank uses to do their online banking. Like, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are in customer support roles. If there's some issue with that app, that process should be automated, right? Like it, it shouldn't be um, something that requires a bunch of manual tickets to be filed. And in that sense, like customer support depends on observability of those applications and to get ahead of issues and to be proactive about them. Similar stories for security, of course, also for finance, like clouds are clouds, uh, (laughs) like Amazon, Google, Azure, these things are expensive and understanding cloud spend is an observability problem that affects the finance organization. I mean, anywhere you look, these giant applications have effects on the business. And my overall vision for observability has always been to make observability relevant anywhere um, within an organization where it can be. And I think standalone Lightstep, our vision was always to get there, but it's going to take us five or 10 years. And as part of ServiceNow, we can do that. You know, That's like a roadmap item at this point. So it's very exciting to me to be able to have observability be you know valuable and useful well beyond the scope that it is today. Um, and that's not just a light set thing, that's just an industry thing. So I think we can bring the industry forward faster in this configuration. And then of course, for going to market, ServiceNow is an amazing business, an amazing sales team, and it'll be great to work with them and as well. But that's that's not enough to me. I mean, we've been approached over the years many times about being acquired and I've never done it. Uh, the reason I did it with, in this case was because I, I actually saw a strategic alignment, not just this year, but over the next several years to do some things that I, I don't think any other two companies could do together. So so that's that's why I thought this was a, a good thing, not just for Lightstep, but for the industry in general. If you look at uh, observability in general, it's kind of becoming a very critical piece of, you know, your stack, your, you know, uh, your strategy, because without knowing what's going on, how will you secure, how can you improve the performance? So if I, if I ask you, what role do you see observability plays in modern, you know, infrastructure, especially when we look at the whole cloud native landscape? Yeah, I mean, I think the language around observability has been really fuzzy and different people talk about it in different ways. So maybe I'll step back to explain how I think about the problem in general. Um, observability is ultimately useful for, you know, two primary things. One is helping people make plan changes faster. So that is typically to deploy new versions of their software. So to accelerate velocity and then um, to respond to unplanned changes more quickly. So non-planned change usually being an incident um, of some sort, right? So it's always about change, either about um, improving the confidence and clarity people have in making plan changes or responding quickly to unplanned changes. And in both cases, um, the observability 
uh, solution that you're using has to make change like a core competency. And, uh, and I don't see that right now with a lot of the things out there. Observability has actually become a discussion of metrics, logs, and traces, and you have separate search UIs to understand each one of these pillars, and maybe some hyperlinks between them. In my mind, that's the raw data. It's just the telemetry. Observability should be about accelerating change um, and responding to change. Like th That's what it should be about. Um, monitoring also is an important part of observability. It's not that observability is replacing it, but monitoring is, is the part of observability that detects the health of you know some component of your system and connects it to the overall business and observability again is about understanding changes to that health uh, and maintaining um, you know uh, high reliability throughout uh, you know massive parallel change in the cloud native architecture so that that's how i think about observability in general and i just want to level set on that because i don't think that um, it's how the discussion typically plays out right now um, with that said i think it's pretty obvious how it's relevant like if you want to to make changes quickly, observability is literally a requirement, I think, to do that. Um, otherwise, you're kind of making changes in the dark, right? Um, and similarly, uh, remaining reliable uh, when you have five or 6,000 deploys happening per month within an organization requires um, observability to, to quickly understand how those changes propagate and affect, um, you know, a, a team A can make a change that affects team B or team X, and you need to be able to draw that line clearly, observability is how you do that. So it's 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 obvious how observability is relevant once you define it in that way. And, and that's really how I think about it. Whether you call it observability or monitoring or understandability, it depends on, because we love buzzwords, right? Why not? But but what is the main goal if you look at, if you take a holistic approach, the main goal basically is to, to solve an actual problem. Observability is only a means to that. And the end is, you know, as you mentioned, you know, to make sure things are safe or, you know, you're moving fast. So what is the end goal here? And uh, where does observability stop and where does you know, understandability, or you are able to take any action on that thing because knowing something is wrong and pointing in direction is only part of the problem, but actually being able to go there and do that is equally important. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. And I'm uh, the understandability buzzword, it seems to be trending a little bit. Uh, I'm, um, I, that one frustrates me a little bit. I think observability is supposed to be understandability like the if observe, if you don't understand what's going on then your observability is not working very well in some ways that's kind of the point of it right like literally you know if you go back to control theory in the 60s uh, the original definition of observability has to do with literally understanding there's that word again uh, the internal state of the system based on its outputs which in our case is the telemetry coming out of the system so those two things i have trouble differentiating between them in my head um the um uh to, to get more to the essence of your question, though, I think the reason that it's it's such a challenge for people right now is that uh, the systems that we're building in cloud native, um, they're generating um, the amount of data they generate is not just proportional to the number of users that are you know banging on the application. It's proportional to that multiplied by the number of services in the application. Because as you add more services per transaction, the amount of data that's being generated scales you know roughly linearly with that. So as you move to having hundreds or thousands of services, you're generating hundreds or thousands of times as much data. Um, and that becomes very costly. And it's also really difficult to navigate um, from a, just a, U, a UX standpoint. It's hard to navigate and understand that much data. So I think the challenge for observability is um, finding the patterns in that data um, rather than forcing an end user to write custom queries or to look at 100 examples themselves and figure out what the pattern is as a human being. Um, Sounds like um, marketing uh, at first, frankly, I think everyone's talking about doing that and doing correlations and things like that. But in actual fact, the data engineering behind that is extremely difficult. You need to be able to um, to take data from many different parts of the system, which are thus like aggregated, that, that are distributed across many different um, parts of some observability backend and get them all into one place to do the analysis. And it has to be done in real time um, with very little lag, uh, if it's going to be useful for incident resolution. And that problem is um, is actually beyond a lot of the infrastructure that's out there right now. And I think that's why people are kind of confused. What this looks like is that you get to, you're in an incident, you detect that something is going wrong, that part's pretty easy. And then you're trying to figure out, you know, what changed, which is, I think, the central question of observability, as I was saying. 
and an observability solution that can't say, you know, let's not just look at this one transaction that was slow or had an error, but let's look at a couple thousand of them, both during the incident and before the incident, and figure out like what is the one thing that's different about these two data sets that helps explain the regression that we're actually you know trying to remediate right now. To do that, um, it's a massive data engineering problem um, that doesn't lend itself to traditional databases, nor does it lend itself to a plain old time series database like a metric solution, nor does it lend it to uh, nor does it lend itself to like a bunch of um, trace or log data stuck into Elasticsearch or something like that. It requires a different type of technical approach. But once you can aggregate all the data in one place, you can find that there actually are correlations and that it turns out so-and-so made a deployment um, a few minutes ago and 95% uh, of the traffic in this incident goes to that new version. The old version didn't have this issue. And you know that's your explanation for this regression. But doing that join and that analysis um, it can't be something that a human being needs to do themselves. It has to be done automatically by the observability tool um, because it's there are too many changes happening uh, for uh, human beings to keep track of them themselves. And, and again, I think that's just an illustration of what observability needs to be doing automatically that uh, I think, um, unfortunately, people are struggling to do manually at the moment uh, with, with most solutions. Right, right. If you look at, uh, just let's go back to the previous discussion when we are talking about, hey, does uh, observability replace monitoring? Or if, if we just look at, you know, uh, 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 logging and tracing and all those things. So, and uh, I also uh, remember that there are two uh, projects, open tracing and telemetry, they, they merged to create a new project. So if you look at the holistic picture, uh, you you did initially say that you know one is not going to replace the other, but if you do look at all these either you call it buzzwords or all the technology that are there, if you look at the overall picture of observ observability, where do you see things overlap? Where do you think things complement, or we are just using different terms for the same thing? Yeah, I, I, it's a really good question. I think of it. I have a pretty clear picture in my head of how this should fit together anyway. At, at there's really three layers. The lowest layer is the telemetry itself. And um, and uh, that's where metrics, logs, and traces are actually the right abstraction when you're talking about the raw data. So the telemetry, the raw data, you want to get that out of your application and you want to do it um, efficiently um, and you want to do it hopefully without locking yourself into any other solution downstream because getting the data out, it should, it should be a vendor neutral thing. So with open tracing, which I helped to create in 2016, um, we accomplished that, but specifically for tracing data. And I think the scope there was simply too narrow. Uh, and we realized that after the Open Census project was released in 2018, I believe. And then we fused the two projects to become Open Telemetry in, um, in 2019. Open Telemetry at this point is GA'd and has support from all the major cloud vendors, all the major observability vendors, and is like broadly being adopted in enterprise and at you know digital native startups and places like that. The beauty of open telemetry is that you get the telemetry uh, metrics and traces for sure, and logging is coming down the pipe. And I think next year it should be GA'd. You get that data without locking yourself into a vendor. Um, so that's great. The problem is it's just the data, and the data is not valuable. Um, if you find yourself buying a metrics or a tracing or a logging solution, I think you should think twice about that because those are not problems or solutions. That's just the data. Um, the data needs to go into some kind of data platform. Uh, that can be open source or it could be a vendor, but the data platform has to be integrated at the data layer to understand how all this different telemetry relates to itself, right? Um, metrics and traces are very different structurally, but they do have common tags and common elements, and the data platform needs to be able to do those joins automatically uh, in order to make um, explain metrics in terms of traces and vice versa. And that is actually a necessity if you want to understand how these systems behave. So the data platform is the next level. And I think there's a huge area of innovation there around cost control and profiling. The data is expensive, it is large. Um, and that's it doesn't matter if you're using a vendor or open source. If it's open source, it's going to be expressed in the Amazon bill or Azure or GCP bill. But you have to run the infrastructure to support that data. And right now, the tooling to profile and control that cost is very poor. And I think that's a huge pain point for the overall value proposition for observability. 
Um, so there's a second layer there, the data platform. And then finally, the third layer is when you actually start solving business problems. And again, I've talked about this before, but really you have some kind of core monitoring, which is not going away. That looks like dashboards and alerts for sure. And hopefully SLOs, if you're moving in that direction, that's all, those are all different forms of monitoring, of trying to understand how the health of a particular component of your system relates to the overall business ultimately. That's what monitoring is for. And then you have to be able to um, mitigate you know, changes to that health and to accelerate changes to the software um, uh, using observability. And that's, you know, a much longer conversation and probably a difficult thing to cover in, you know, three minutes like this. But, but that's, that's the area where I think the greatest innovation is taking place right now. But with all that said, so I have telemetry at the bottom, data platform in the middle, and then, you know, monitoring and kind of, you know, um, what we call change intelligence with LightStep, but really just understanding and accelerating change. Um, at the top layer, um, that's all great. But most of the conversation right now, literally, is still talking about telemetry. It's still talking about metrics and traces and stuff like that, which is way at the bottom of the stack and is very far from value and also far from the cost control issues that are in the second layer too. So I think the conversation we're having about observability really ought to it ought to be driven by these top level concerns about you know monitoring and and change and not by the telemetry, which should power those um, use cases and that value proposition. Tell me a bit about what's going on with the open telemetry, when was the latest release out? And um, of course it's open source project, what does the roadmap look like? The first thing I'd say about open telemetry is it's a very broad project and the maturity of open telemetry isn't just a singular thing. It depends on which component you're talking about. The uh, tracing support is now you know, fully GA'd um, for metrics, Aspects of it are fully GA'd, aspects are still in the works, and then logging is the least mature of those you know, three fundamental types of telemetry, and that work is ongoing, and I think the idea is to have it GA'd sometime in the next calendar year. So that's like the rough overview, but, um, but if you go to opentelemetry.io, you can get a much more granular view of, of the maturity for a particular component. And if you do look at open telemetry, uh, what is the scope, you know, uh, because earlier you were talking about it, there are still some things that are now there, like for one example is logging. So can you talk, talk about that aspect as well? Yeah, I mean, I think logging in particular is interesting because it's um, not for all use cases of logging, but for many use cases of logging, tracing, I think, is beginning to replace logging. That's because um, logs that are about transactions, so about like an actual user request, that's pretty much what a trace is, except a trace also has the additional benefit of being able to follow that transaction across service boundaries. So I think we're seeing that um, it's not possible to replace all of logging with tracing, but it is possible to replace much of it with tracing. So logging itself is being uh, rethought. You can, in some ways, you can think of tracing as just being logging with some kind of automated join that makes the logs much more useful. Um, so one of the most fascinating things I've been seeing is just that move towards tracing in general, away from logging, as open telemetry becomes more accessible and makes that technology easier to adopt. Like you don't have to do custom instrumentation to get high quality tracing anymore, which used to be a requirement even a few years ago. So, so I think that's an interesting transition, but logs will still have an important place for non-transactional data and open telemetry uh, should support those use cases as well sometime next year. Ben, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about uh, not only the whole uh, move to service now and how you two are working together to to further the kind of you know the mission that you have in your life but also uh, talk uh, about observability and uh, how things are happening and changing in this space uh, so thanks for those insights and i would love to have you back on the show thank you thank you so much it's been fun